as I put my makeup on this morning, I thought you should see what makeup does for an 84 year old face. Well, today is the day that we're going outside and I'm going to be modeling some of the clothes that I've told you about, especially that jacket up there and a few other things that I did get for Christmas and have picked up. Now I told you about those brushes that I bought that are the four in one and five in one. And I'm not going to use these today, but I will show you them. As you know, I have extremely dry skin. And the first thing that I have to do, even before I get my coffee in the morning, is to lubricate my face. I get up in the morning and it feels so tight and uncomfortable that I have to put something on. And I think over the years, I've been doing this since I was a little girl, that because of that dry skin tight problem that I have might be one of the reasons why I'm a little ahead of the game at 84 with um, keeping my face a little, maybe less wrinkled, uh, a little fuller, maybe the cheekbones are higher, I don't know. I've never really ever worried about it. And only since I started using makeup two years ago, believe it or not, when I started YouTube was the first time, other than I, Miss Garrett, that I started to realize I had to do some covering up of sun damage at the Jersey Shore. And that's what I'm gonna show you this morning. What I do to, people say, what do you do to your face? So you're gonna see this morning, once again, I've done this before, but I'm holding up this jar of Nivea, which I believe to be my holy grail. I've used this Nivea since I was in my 30s. Before that, it was everything from Vaseline to any kind of oils that I could find. Sometimes in the morning, if I wanna do a, a quick something, this is in my bathroom, right on the sink ready to go if I want to do a, a quick something before I even go make my coffee. This is an almond oil. Any oil, believe it or not, the thicker the better. And that's why I like some of these. Now what I use on my whole body after a shower and many times in the daytime on my face is this Vaseline Intensive Care. It's, it's an oil, a thick oil. And I love it. I don't wear makeup every day. If I'm out and about, I might try and put something on. But most of the time I'm running around with oils and creams on my face in the daytime. This is another one I use. Um, I use Mary Kay because it's nice and greasy also. It has that, that red. In fact, it's what I put on my face this morning when I got up. Start in your 20s, 30s, lubricate and moisturize. I don't care what it is, just get that grease or oils on your face. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. Hello, I'm doing a little interjection here. I realized that as I was editing, I couldn't find the clip that I had done in the beginning of the makeup when I always put my castor oil on under my makeup even on top of whatever I put on in the morning before my coffee, whatever, I will always go and put the black Jamaican castor oil on because it's a thick oil and I find it's better than any other thing under the makeup. It makes the makeup glide on. The other thing that you didn't see was me putting my e.l.f. primer on. I use the e.l.f. primer and no foundation and I just put it on my face with my fingers and that's all I do before I begin the process. Now I forgot to do, usually I do my under eye uh, concealer and the cheeky concealer before the blush, but I was so busy and trying to rush outside. I did the blush first, so that got covered up when I had to go back and do the cover up. So just wanted to pop in to tell you that was another little mistake I made. So I will continue along here, hopefully have this up tomorrow morning. Basically what I have on my face that I want to show you in the raw 
are brown spots from probably the sun. We didn't know too much about sun protection back in the 50s when we were sunbathing. We used the oil and God knows whatever else to get tan. And um, I do have my forehead right now is I have this thing here. Someone asked me if I bumped my head. I've had it for a while and I know I have to get it looked at, probably have to get something done, maybe some stitches, but whatever that is, I've got to get it taken care of. It doesn't go away. Um, really have not had too much in the way of wrinkles. Yes, if you saw me without grease outside, I'd look a lot different than I do with makeup and I do swear by makeup. Now I have had nothing done. No fillers, no Botox, no facelifts, nothing. And I honestly believe that what I've had to do just to be comfortable all these years, yes, my face looks like an older face, a mature woman, of course. Um, I do have too much weight on me. Maybe my jawline would be a little bit better of some of the weight, but you know what? I don't care. I think that a, a happy face, content, self-loved face, no matter how many wrinkles or whatever is going on, is beautiful. So this is what we're starting with. And I'm going to show you what I do. I also have hooded eyes and, and lately I've noticed crepiness up here. So I think I have to lay off anything too um, shiny. Since I was trying to race to get this done, I put the blush on before I put my concealer on. So I did cover up all my concealer. So here we go again. I hear my moosey waking up. <laughs> no? Oh, oh, so he, he listens to everything I say. And he says, I say so, so often. So <laughs> there we go. Okay, a velvet here on the laugh lines. And of course, those little marionettes. I do go over the cheeks because I have to hide. So we'll have to do that. We're gonna conceal, okay? And in the meantime, all of this has managed to set. So these are the new brushes I've been fascinated with that I've talked about all week for two or three videos and just haven't been able to fit them in. But the ones that I am most interested in showing you are the ones that I saw on another YouTube video and they're convertible brushes, which are meant to be mostly, I guess, for when you're uh, on the go, you're out and about and you wanna to touch up your makeup. One is a little smaller than the other and would fit nicely into the little makeup pouches. And I think the other one will too. And I think these are wonderful. Let me show them to you. This one is the four in one, I believe. And I thought I would give Margie one of these. Margie's birthday is tomorrow and we are going to have brunch with her, with her, one of her sons and his family and our new little great granddaughter. Well, she's nine or 10 months old and her name is Peyton. She's that beautiful little teeny one that was christened. I think we showed you her, her baptism. So here it is. It's beautiful. It's kind of a copper color and starting off, you take the top off and you have a beautiful sponge, a pointy sponge, which would be great for touching up your under eye concealer. Now you pull that up and inside, I believe this one is a lip brush. Now, when you pull that out on the other end, you have another brush. Now, I don't know whether this one might be the lipstick, the lip brush or the eye brush. I think this is the lip brush. I was mistaken. You go to this end and you see a lovely slanted brush. It's nice and thick. And I think this would be a blush applicator or a blender, or you could put your foundation on with this. I just thought this was a lovely brush. It's probably, what, five inches long? and fits very nicely into one of these small makeup kits. 
Now the other one is a little bit longer and it's called a five-in-one makeup brush. And I'll show you the difference in length on these. It's probably less than an inch. It is, it's about half an inch bigger. This is a sponge on this end and it's slanted. And I presume you use this for the same thing, whatever you use your sponges for. This end is a beautiful brush. This is, this is bigger, a little bit bigger and not quite as dense as the other one. Here we go. And three little brushes in this end. You just pull this sponge up and I presume what you do is you pull each one out as you want to look, to use it. Can you see those? There's one that looks like a, an eye shadow. There's a lip brush and an eyebrow brush. And you pull them out one by one and you use them as such. I think this is cute. This one is really cute. And then you just pop them back in and put it all together again. And it fits as well, same color, the same bronze, and it also fits very nicely right in your makeup kit. And you can carry this in your purse. I think these are great. So those are the two I wanted to show you. I also wanted to show you my new e.l.f. It's called a powder brush, but I needed a great big giant fluffy brush, mainly mainly to uh, blend. I thought this would be one. I don't think it particularly has to be used for powder because I don't use powder and I doubt if I ever will, but what a pretty brush with the clear plastic handle and oh my gosh, it's so soft, so soft. Maybe I will have to use some powder, but <laughs> I won't. But I will maybe do some blending or something with this. It's just so pretty. Uh, I watched this with Jacqueline Hill, one of those young gals that has a million followers. And she uses this for her sculpting. And the, the one that she used was NARS. This is an e.l.f. brush and it's um, a contouring brush. And I, I do want to get more into the contouring and the fishy face thing. And starting at the top of the ear, and she makes this line straight down with this because it's skinny and then pulls it down with, I believe, a blender brush. I think I'll try this and see if this works. So we'll put a little bit on this contour brush. I don't know whether it's gonna matter. She says, find the top of your ear and just make a little line right here. Probably didn't even come out. And then afterward, you are gonna blend it in. I have a little mirror here. I have learned to lighten up in my makeup, especially eye makeup, and uh, I used to use the bronzer, and that was much too dark for me. But I might get back to it because I love the look. So we're gonna put some there. I don't know, see what I'm trying to do here. I don't know whether it's working. It works much better when I just use this, and, and I think I'm gonna go back to it. I'm gonna have to look in my mirror here for a minute. See how it comes out better here, much better. And we also put some up here in the interest of looking healthy. I'm really trying to rush it here. Here's how I use my stick. Down the bridge of the nose, you always see a little tip on my nose. Some people have, I think it was a man that commented once and said, he could, it was so distracting, the snow on the end of my nose. But I go to the cheekbone and I swoop up. Once again, the fishy face. Okay, a little bit on the forehead in the middle and that's a little glow and on the chin. I am a little heavy handed with this, but I do go in and blend. Here is where I think makeup makes the largest improvement on my face. Well, everywhere it covers up a lot of things, but especially in the eyes. Because my eyes are so pale, they kind of fade into the background. And that's one thing I have always tried to accent. I didn't wear makeup for years and years, maybe a little blush on the cheeks, but I did put mascara on. 
<clears throat> what I've used lately, and I've got, tried to go light-handed on my eyes, I've discovered that the background should be some kind of a light brown. I've been using Maybelline, which uh, I've used this little color up here, which is pretty much gone. It's a light tan or a light brown, you might say. Right, here we go, and back and forth. Now I do have the hooded eyes <clears throat> and my eyelids and upper area have gotten a little crepey. So this is not a shiny product, I hope not. I'm gonna pick up my other little brush and I'm go going to go for the darker color in here at the bottom. And I've tried to watch all the ladies that do such exquisite makeup. And I'm going to put a little bit darker in the corners of the eyes, right in here. Today it looks a little darker than I normally do. So I'm gonna try and rub it out a little bit. I don't like it to come beyond the eyes. Essence Lash Princess. And for some reason or other, it does seem to lengthen the eyes and um, a nice brush on the end. And that's what I've been using. I will fill in my eyebrows a little bit. Because of age, besides thinning of the hair, I have noticed that in the middle, I am losing hairs on my eyebrows. I kind of just try and do this lightly up into the corner. I, I like to keep a natural look and I like a little fuller look supposed to keep this on the outswing, not down too much. You don't want to pull the eyes down. I'm sure I forgot something, but <clears throat> I want to. I've spent much too much time trying to make up, but I want to get outside and model some of these clothes while the weather is really nice outside. So I think my face is ready. I will go put some jewelry on and try and take down these. This is just a quick set to see if it works. It's kind of okay. And definitely the dry shampoo does wonders for my hair. I really love the way it poofs it up. As I say, my hair has been thinning the past couple of years and I do like my shorter hairdo. By the way, do you notice what I've tried to create the fishy face? With the lighter part, you make a little heart with your face and this is supposed to be the lighter part. Make your fishy face and then Everything else around here should be a little darker. But in the middle, even even some people say put a little highlighter here. And of course we've got it here and here. That's it. And that's it. So let's get on to the modeling. Gotta get dressed. And first of all, I think I'll show you the outfit that I have on. I'm going out. Here is that lovely velour I'm gonna call it a track suit, but it's more of a leisure suit because it does have features that are not necessarily for working out in. It's a, a gray velour that matches my blingy tennis shoes that she gave me. And if you notice, the sleeves are more, almost more like a kimono. It's a loose top, loose sleeves, three quarter, but it does have great pockets. It's kind of a dressy track suit, as you can see, and then, matches my blingy shoes that Dubby gave me. And they're gray with sparkly rhinestones on them and I just love it. Love the kimono type top. You do can still do exercises with it, but it's more for going out, it's dressy and I love it. And I'm showing it with one of the pieces of my turquoise jewelry. So that's this suit. Now, if I were going out I would put shoulder pads in it because as you know, one of my never, never, never look your age is to get those rounded shoulders a little more squared off. Here they are. These are those cute tennies that have bling on them. I love the heel in the back and the gray color looks so great with it. So, ooh, thanks, Debbie. Now it seems a little funny to be out in a 80 or 90 degree day in a nice puffy vest and a long wool black sweater. 
but I had to show you this. Among other things, this was a birthday or a Christmas present. It's been so long, I can't remember. It's a puffy vest from Land's End, and it's not too bulky. It's great, looks great with the black, and as you know, I love my animal prints. Zips up nice and warm, and I do love this outfit with the gold rather than silver. It's cozy, it's very fashionable, and actually she gave Margie one just like it. You know, there's been some talk about uh, black high neck turtleneck sweaters. And I think Kay Carter was the one that started it, called it, I think I'll break up with my black turtleneck sweaters. Well, <laughs> I kind of agree with that. Tamara of Tamara's Timeless Beauty did talk about it too. But we all figured out we love them. They're very fashionable and we've decided we're not gonna break up with them, especially the ones that don't exactly hug your neck. I have these booties with some uh, silver buckles and a nice heel on them that I think look good with them. Now, while I have the black on, I'm going to just make a quick change to show you another look that you can wear with a black turtleneck and some black pants. Isn't this cute? This is the other jacket that I picked up on eBay. And it's from that catalog right now, I can't remember the name of it, but it's more of a dressy outfit rather than that capelet poncho. And I love the Southwestern trim, but see how nice it looks with the black once again pulling this away from my neck. Actually, I put the sweater on backwards today. Didn't want to change it. Don't you just love the pattern? I also, within the past couple of months, picked up this fabulous Southwestern belt buckle or belt, the Southwestern belt. Leather on the inside, leather buckle, and this beautiful fabric. It is like a tapestry. Look at the design on it. It will go well with all my, I don't need these right now. Ooh, it's warm, feels like summer. And I don't need, I think this would look great with all my Southwestern uh, regalia. So I would put this on with this probably. It's nice and big. Sometimes it's hard to find belts that fit nicely, but this one is good. And once again, let me get this in here. It's a nice compliment to the jacket, right? It matches kind of dresses it up a bit. And this was the second eBay jacket. I don't think I paid more than $20, $25 for this. So I think I have one or two more outfits and one, the poncho. And I'm gonna show you what I did with it. These are some conchos that I ordered on eBay as soon as I decided that I wanted to redo the jacket. Um, the sleeves, I think I mentioned, I think I mentioned that the sleeves were too tight. So I had to open up the sleeves, which I did. Opened them all the way up and I was planning to put in a gusset as you can see, the sleeve is all the way opened here. I decided that when I tried it on, it looked okay as sort of a cape with everything open. I'm going to show you where I'm going to put some of these conchos to dress it up, and you can tell me what you think. Well, part of the video in the middle as I was starting to show you a long shot and also to show you some of the, um, of the silver, turquoise and coral jewelry that I'm wearing, it went into a slow-mo. So I'm gonna try and do it again. 
Some of my jewelry I've had a long, long time, most of it I have. Bill used to pick up pieces for me in New Mexico, in Arizona, in his travels. And this is an interesting piece. This and my bracelet. Now you notice the turquoise is different colors. I love the green, I love the deep blue, I love the sky blue. Uh, turquoise comes in all different colors. And I do love the mixture of the coral, like in this necklace. Um, let me get up closer and show you. Now this is one of my squash blossoms and I love the turquoise and the, and the silver together. Sometimes it does twist on me and you can't always see the beautiful turquoise and silver going up the sides, but it is lovely. And the rings, they're all different kinds that I've, I've picked up myself and Moosey. This was one of my first pieces that Moosey got me, I believe. Um, I do love it with black. I was going to wear a jeans shirt with this, which would have been more along the Ralph Lauren lines, but I wanted to wear the black to show off the jewelry. I'm going to sit down and tell you a little bit about the jacket. You see a little bit of the close-up detail on here, which I love. And can you see what I've done with the sleeves? I opened them up here, and now I've decided, I think, to leave them open rather than fill them in. And it's sort of a cape effect. You still put your, your hands into the sleeves. And I also have gotten some of those ponchos I showed you. I'm gonna put one here so that I can button the jacket and it's less floppy. I might put some on the corners of the sleeves maybe here and here, just to decorate it a bit, but beautiful jacket, isn't it? So I have it on with my faux black leather pants and some taupe booties, but I also have two pair of, of Southwestern boots that I've had for a long time and love. These are a little taller and I love these. They're like a heavy tapestry with the brown. And then another pair I have, which are about this tall, they're shorter, they're trimmed in a taupe leather here, and the, the boot itself is taupe colored. So the pin on my hat is a pin given to me by a friend, and I like to wear it when I wear the silver jewelry with it. So I've enjoyed this so much, and I hope that you love everything that I did in this video today. It's going to be so long but it's one of those videos that's going to show you some of the way I try and do my mature face to hide some of the little things that happen as you age. But I still believe, besides the makeup, which I think is necessary to help enhance our lives, I still believe that a good, happy attitude is the best thing for us as we age. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in our next video. Goodbye for now. God bless us all.